I had one more activity I was going to demonstrate here now today, and that is Kahoot. So I have a little Kahoot game. No, that's not the link. I want to go back into my Teams. So if everyone goes back to my Rob's demo class team, to the general tab, you'll see that there's six more tabs here. I have one called, uh, there should be one called Play Kahoot. There we go, Play Kahoot. So if you go to that tab, you'll see this Kahoot come up here. And I'll get you the game pin now. And you can play along, follow along this game. You can use your phone or your laptop for this. So this is another formative feedback activity that I could do here in class. So I'm going to go to my actual Kahoot website as an instructor. And I think that I lost it here. Here we go, Kahoot. So I have my game. And I want to play this. So I go into Kahoot.com. You guys go into Kahoot.it. And I am going to launch this. The Kahoot is now loading. And I'm going to click on classic one-on-one -on -one player versus player. You could also do small groups if you wanted each small group to put in a response. That might get a bit loud uh, as you argue over group consensus. My daughter, who's in, uh, who's, who's in grade 8 down at SPEC, they do this a lot, but they play between classrooms. So all the grade 8 classrooms that have the same course at the same time, they'll play classroom against classroom to see which classroom gets the responses first. So we're going to do this classic. And here's the game pin for you all. So you go to that link in Teams, put in this game pin, 951007. So we've got Robin and someone named me. Me, moi, and Robin. Okay, everybody is ready to go. I'm going to click on start. So memory and attention in e-learning is the first question. My apologies if you're not all up on these questions, but I just picked this existing game that I had. So what students at home or here in the lecture theater can do is just click on the icon, the shape on their screen that matches the... Um, the question. So nobody picked that. The correct answer was storage. So next question comes up. And you have about 10 seconds to enter a response to this. So you click on the shape that, that corresponds. Okay, uh, you should be seeing them in the Teams meeting because I'm sharing my screen, so it should be showing up there, and it's also on the big screen here in the lecture theater. Well, uh, if you're at home, uh, the best advice to give your students if they're doing this from at home and they're joining the Teams meeting remotely is to use their phone to click on the answers. So they'd be in the Teams meeting on their on their laptop. They could use their phone, go to kahoot.it and put in the game pin. So it's just like going to the movie theater, playing those uh, scene time games in the movie theater. So we'll do one more of these questions. We don't need to go through all eight. So Robin is in the lead. All right, so we've got a mix of answers here, and one person got it right. Way to go, Robin. Robin is in the lead. What this is good for 
there's, there's a couple of benefits to this. One, it sort of spices things up, gives you a little bit of a game uh, gamification aspect to your lecture. So it kind of eases the tension, makes things a little more fun. But for me as an instructor, it's another way for me to gather formative feedback about the class. Now, I don't have any hard results in any specific student that I can use for summative assessment purposes, but it helps me read the class. I can see from the responses here, if this were um, a real scenario, that one student has got it crystal clear, but two thirds of the class are having difficulty with these concepts. So it tells me I should spend some more time explaining the answers uh, to these particular questions, maybe assign some remedial resources for everyone to go through to bring them back up to speed on that or spend some more time here in the live class talking about it. So it serves a couple of different purposes.